Actually, we recently recommended going long Taiwan dollar as a defensive trade. As I mentioned at the beginning, the dollar seems to be getting some resilience. Um, so from a defensive perspective, trying to find a currency to be long, we actually like Taiwan dollar at this juncture. It provides a low correlation, low beta option for being uh, short dollar and long Taiwan. The data in Taiwan continues to do relatively well. We're also at a, a tricky juncture as well in terms of the United States have stepped up its scrutiny with regard to currency intervention and uh, Asian central banks trying to lean against the appreciation of their currencies. Um, we obviously had the December FX manipulation report uh, out by the U.S. Treasury and obviously as well Yellen, Yellen the new U.S. Treasury Secretary, has also come out to say that they'll be watching Asian currencies quite closely. So the combination of uh, Taiwan economy doing relatively well, uh, the export boom extending, uh, I think should lend further support to Taiwan dollar as well. Okay, where does that leave the story with the other market that's been rallying away, uh, the South Korean market, that is the KOSPI, and we're seeing that with some resilience in the Korean won too. Yes, absolutely. I think Korean won is another currency uh, that is doing well. It's a bit more higher, volat uh, higher volatility. So in terms of trying to pick a currency that's a bit more defensive, um, if the dollar should get lifted a little bit higher, uh, we, we, we prefer the Taiwan relative to the Korean won. But that said, the Korean won does very well. Another thing to watch with the relationship between the Korean won and China is Korea tends to be a bit more reliant upon the fiscal and credit stimulus in China. What we found is that there's a, about an eight to nine month lag, as you see, total social financing or credit expansion in China eight to nine months later. Uh, the capital goods demand from China feeds through into Korean exports and those Korean exports uh, uh, doing well benefit the Korean won. But when we look at the latest credit data from China, it seems as if we're peaking a bit on that credit cycle and that China continues to pursue a, uh, a policy of deleveraging. So that may start to weigh on the Taiwan dollar as well, potentially more in the second to third quarter. Um, but the Korea won trade will be more reliant on China uh, to the extent whereas Taiwan has got a more of a global faceted mm. demand story for it, in our view. Very interesting. And in fact, you've got many feathers in your cap, Claudio, because you, you, you run the full gamut of emerging market currencies, not just those in Asia. And uh, I'm just taking a look at some of your calls here with regards to EM currencies. One of them is uh, be short the rand against the ruble. Can you explain that for us? Well, that one is relatively a trade in terms of the positioning going on. So we found that the positioning, you know, the RAND has caught up quite a lot. It's appreciated quite a bit in terms of the, the fourth quarter of last year, whereas the, the ruble has been much more unloved. And, you know, when we look at terms of the dynamics, obviously, uh, Russia is under a lot of uh, uh, external pressure, geopolitical pressure. But at the same time, what they've done is uh, made their balance sheets, so to speak, and their financing more robust. So on a relative basis, again, going back to this position where speaking to a lot of clients, clients are somewhat uncertain about the dollar view. They like emerging market currencies, but they don't want to get caught out by a dollar rally. So we've recommended in the case of uh, Russian ruble versus Rand, uh, taking out the dollar risk and focusing on the relative positioning and the relative merits of both those currencies.